Good morning, Patria Family Church, and I uh, hope that you guys are well. Um, I'm going to start off this morning by saying that um, we are really struggling with internet line this morning. So uh, what happened is that the fiber, for some reason, in our neighborhood, um, I'm not sure if it was cut with something that happened, or, um, but anyway, over this weekend with yesterday and the storm, um, something went wrong on the fiber. So I'm on my cell phone tethering this morning and the, the line is unfortunately very unstable with the wind and also the, uh, the overcast weather. So to start off this morning, I'm going to start off by apologizing because what's going to happen is this line is, is most probably not going to be that stable. But I want to apply my faith with you guys and I'm going to hope and, and trust that uh, that God will in some way bring this message across. So if there is a lot of dipping this morning, please uh, excuse it. Um, we can't do anything about it. So I'm trusting the Lord to bring this line up and and keep it stable for us because it is on a cell phone um, line at the morning. So hope that you guys are well and uh, that you enjoyed a great week. And um, this is a beautiful morning. It was a beautiful weekend. I'm looking forward to a stunning week that's lying ahead. Um, Rudy and myself are li is, uh, is lining up um, a beautiful teaching on what God has been speaking to us about um, as an eldership and what has been happening um, during the last two weeks in our lives in how we just in accountability and transparency um, started speaking very openly about um, the, the, the different angles that we felt Satan came at, um, the different angles of uh, deceiving and the different angles of um, stealing and robbing us of peace and uh, the things that he came at um, with uh, trying to hinder um, a, a relationship with God, um, closeness to God, worship to God and those kind of things. So I'm really looking forward to this week and, and we trust that it's going to be a great week for all of us. I want to start off by prayer this morning. And uh, just before I do that, if you are logging in from somewhere around the world, we just want to welcome you. We want to say welcome to the Patria Family Church um, live streaming um, channel. And uh, it's so good to have you guys with us. We form part, as you can see um, above me, uh, of every nation, Southern Africa, which is an international movement of churches doing together. So our movement of every nation, um, we are part of a, a Southern Africa region. And uh, we live to honor God by planting Christ-centered, spirit-filled, and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. And currently we are in over 80 nations. And it is our dream and our passion and our hope and our applied faith to have congregations or churches in every nation around the world. And that is exactly what the name says, every nation. God came and gave himself for every nation. And what is currently happening and, and what we can see around the world is that it is so important that we recognize that he came for every nation. What is happening in, um, in what others call um, uh, the, the current race issue. I don't like the word at all. And I know that everyone that, that knows us um, understands why. I firmly believe that if we call it racial tension, that we ourselves imply that there are different races and there are not different races in the human race. We are the human race and we have beautiful different colors. And we have different cultures, however, and the different cultures and the not understanding each other uh, due to a lack of relationship and, um, and, and, and understanding um, backgrounds. That's what's currently going on. And unfortunately, due to Satan being Satan, Satan is trying to hurt a, a specific um, group of color. And that is... That is what we need to stand for. We need to stand up as the human race, but not as a human race. We need to stand up as Christians, as brothers and sisters in Christ, and make sure that we teach 
and live in accordance to the word of God. Because in accordance to the word of God, God came in. And not only did he in the Old Testament select his nation, the nation of Israel, and therefore the Jews who became the Jews out of that when Abraham started that nation. Um, but God came in and said that in Jesus Christ, we are therefore no longer uh, Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, and slave or free. We are all just one in Christ. So when we come into Christ, that is what we need to stand for. The two kingdoms that is opposite to each other is the kingdom of light, which is God's kingdom, which is above all the rest, and Satan's kingdom, which is the kingdom of darkness. And we always have to remember that any issue in the human race on this planet, any issue that's going to hurt and go against a specific group, whether that is um, the color of your skin, whether that is your nationality, whether that is you being a woman or a man, no matter what it is, Satan will always try and bring division. That is why the feminist movement is standing up. It's against. It's because of the amount of hurt that men has caused women. The amount of verbal abuse, physical abuse, with men usually being the stronger. Um, the, the, just the physical abuse, the sexual abuse. And because of that, there is a, 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 a power standing up in the feminist movement around the world. And we need to understand that unfair is unfair, unrighteous is unrighteous, and we need to stand for righteousness because the Word of God says that God loves righteousness. Okay, so that's what I wanted to start off with, is just make sure that we understand that this morning what we're going to speak about is the kingdom of light. We are the children of God, and that's what we want to live out as the human race, as as being not of this earth, but from heavenly places, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Because to a Christian, that is what is important. If you are logged in this morning, and please hear me in this, if you have not yet come to a place of having accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you have not yet come to a place of you recognizing that Christ is what is missing in your life. If there is um, a lot of doubt and hurt and confusion, um, anger, unforgiveness, if, there, if, if you have not yet come to that place of surrendering your life to Christ and giving yourself over to Him, giving yourself to Him and say, Lord, I am a sinner, I need you. I want to just tell you that we, we love the fact that you are watching this and we appreciate the fact that you are logged in. However, this morning in the message that's going to go out, as a congregation, once a week we have a congregational gathering. And this gathering this morning is there for the gathering of the saints. And if you are joining us, you are so welcome and we so appreciate that you are. If there is anything that we can assist with or help with, if there is any need, if you want someone to give you a call, if the message that you hear this morning um, brings you to a place of saying, I need more of what you guys have, um, then this is a hotline number that we have. And so please make use of this hotline number. If you want someone to contact you, if if this message stirs your heart, if you've not yet accepted Jesus and you come to a place of recognizing that you need him this morning, please make sure that um, you text this number um, and then someone will come back to you. We are busy with the gathering of the saints this morning, and therefore everyone that is logged in as a congregant, as part of our congregation, everything that we're going to put out this morning is an encouraging message to all of us as brothers and sisters in Christ, even our worship. Our worship isn't put out um, this morning um, to, to help you get into the heavens. It's to help you link with God. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we are supposed to already have worship in our hearts. And when we gather as the saints, that worship should already be there. So when we go into a time of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, um, it is because our hearts' attitudes are already in place and intact. Okay, So otherwise what we do is we act or play church. 
and um, and and that's not what we want to do. We do not follow or serve a religion. We follow the true one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, guys, I want to start off with prayer, and um, and then we're going to go into a beautiful service. Abba, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. I so appreciate who you are. Holy Spirit, uh, this is my biggest prayer this morning, is that you will speak through me and that today's message will speak into our hearts. The scripture that we're going to read this morning, Lord, was God-breathed. And the Holy Spirit, you were there in encouraging every single writer in um, what they had to write down. And, and therefore, because it's God-breathed, only you can reveal the scripture to us. And so as we go into the scripture, Lord, we, we surrender our lives um, into your hands and we and we ask Holy Spirit that you will teach us and guide us through every word that we're going to speak this morning we appreciate and love you amen amen so guys just to make sure if there is any need uh, that anyone has if there is any um, communication that you need if there is uh, any food that you need if you know of anyone that is currently struggling our public beneficiary organization Stelios um, is doing a lot of work out in the community and uh, and we so value and appreciate how congregants of Patria has come in line and, and also um, jumped on this. And so just for all the financial aid uh, of every cent that everyone is, is giving, it so helps and we appreciate the way that churches come together during a time like this. Um, the amount of food parcels that we could give out the um, amount of just donations that has come in, we so value it and, and we appreciate everyone's effort and also service and also serving attitudes in this. Thank you so much. So if there's any resources that anyone needs, um, there's a lot of communication going out. We do um, not necessarily daily devotionals, but we put out daily videos on our Instagram and Facebook account and also we post it to YouTube. So if you did miss um, any of the, um, the YouTube videos that we put out, we do a study, a weekly study. And uh, this week's study is going to be on peace and us looking at peace and, uh, and what Christ has given to us. Um, and so Rudy and myself are going to do the videos for this week. Please follow us. Um, make sure that you, that you tune in and that you... Um, that you form part of, of what we put out. And then at the end of the week, we give the um, basically the whole week's scriptural references, give it through. And, uh, and so we did the study on um, doing the will of Abba during the week that was done. If you need any information on any resource that we have, please make sure that you contact this number. Um, the team has different um, administrative groups on WhatsApp. And the administrative group is if you get added, it is a push notification. You will only receive what is put out from, from Patria. So once a week or maybe a few times during the week as a reminder or, um, or some links will be sent through. We've got the links for Kingdom Schoolers that are doing Kingdom School. We have a link for all the congregants. We have um, communication that we send out. So the admins team, the management team, doing a phenomenal job. So if you are added to one of these groups, please do not delete yourself from one of them. The reason for it is, if it does come out, you can mute um, that group uh, with anything that comes through, but it's not a chat group. So you don't have to fear that everyone is going to give their thumbs up or, they, or have their chats on that group. It's only administrative. So it's only what is put out from the office. So please don't remove yourself from those groups. And the reason we are asking is up until our application is up and running, our app is going to um, make sure that our communication out to any congregants is done through the application. And therefore, we're working on that. And until we've got that done, unfortunately, we really depend on WhatsApp to put out great communication. Now, we waited for the day that we can do WhatsApp because uh, a few months ago, we still had to do um, SMS and email. And that, that is not uh, what everyone is using uh, lately. So if there's any communication, please make sure to text this number and the team will let's enjoy a great time of fellowship. 
um, with the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Patcher Family Church. What a joy to be with you this morning. What a joy to serve in those moments of worship and, and, and music unto God. Where He has given us breath in our lungs to, to praise Him, to worship Him with. And for us, it's a joy to, to serve you in this moment. So there we are, gathered as family, streaming in on, on devices. The Holy Spirit is already present in every home. And we came into this moment with our worship, not only to worship, but we truly came with worship. So let's join our voices. The words will be on the screen for those who don't know the song. Let's enjoy fellowship with the Holy Spirit as we gather around the song. Let's praise His name together.
us your ways, you guide us in grace. Wait in all your ways. Does say what we want to do in this morning's message is we want to make sure that we look into scripture as to when Satan comes at us, when Satan tries to hinder us hearing the voice of God, when Satan comes at us and disturbs the signals. Um, what is it that he brings? What is the number one thing that Satan attacks? And so in this morning's message, what we're going to do is we're going to look into specifically hearing the voice of God. Now, that's the title of this message is hearing the voice of God. But in hearing the voice of God, what I want to make sure of as we as we look at this message is we're going to build up during this message towards the pinnacle scripture. I want to lay out scriptures this morning. So as we look at the title of hearing the voice of God, there is a common question in Christianity that a lot of people ask. So when people come in, they say the following. They ask this question. And the first question that comes up is, is hearing his voice difficult? Now, this is this is a, a question that that is difficult to answer because obviously if you can't hear his voice, it does seem difficult. And when someone does ask this question, usually the question isn't asked in this way. The question is asked, how do you hear the voice of God? Usually people would ask, do you hear an audible voice? Or people would ask, or is it just by reading scripture? People ask, is it when you go quiet and you think that you hear his voice? So there's different ways in which people ask this question. And, um, and so this morning it is my aim to bring certain scriptures to the forefront um, that we want to look at. Now, scripture as a whole would be the answer uh, to start off with. But we must also know that God is currently worldwide speaking to so many people that has not yet. Let me just get that. Sorry, there's a technical glitch this morning. So people are, are looking at um, around the world being Muslim or Hindu that has not even seen a Christian Bible in their lives. They are hearing the voice of God because God comes to them in Jesus Christ. So he reveals himself to them. And so what happens is what we see is these worldwide when people start to recognize that their faith in their religion or their faith in themselves or their faith in their false gods does not work because of their conscience, because of what God has put into every single one of us, when people recognize that does that does not work, in their conscience they start to call out to God because that is the natural tendency of every person. The reason is because God said that is how he designed us. God said the way that he made us is that everyone on this planet knows that there is a God. He said when you look at creation, Romans 1, when you look at creation, no one can look at creation and say there's no God. He says for he has made it that when you look at creation, you see a creator and you see him. And not only that, he also said that he gave one of us conscience. Now, that is the moral standard in this world, is God placing conscience in us. And that conscience speaks to his law. 
The conscience that God has given us speaks about good and evil. The conscience that he gave us is to understand what is right and what is wrong. And therefore, I want to start always start off by saying the number one way to make sure that you that you get to a place of starting to hear his voice is to clear your conscience. And that is why repentance is so important. That is why humility is so important. I love being church because God has given church different gifts. God has, in his wisdom, said that he is not going to give one person the full amount of gifts that Jesus had, the full amount of gifts that God has, he, because he didn't want a single Jesus. What he wanted was Jesus in and through all of us. And therefore, all of us need one another. And, and, and that's the way that God made it. I love and cherish the different gifts that is around us. Because in those gifts, God has given a prophetic gift. God has given a discerning gift. God has given a gift of all these different functions that he wants to fulfill on this planet. And the beautiful thing is, if we in humility accept those gifts, we live together in harmony, in unity. And that is why Satan would always come against unity. He would always come against unity. Because he knows that a united church is a force that he cannot deal with. Because if we are totally dependent on Jesus Christ, we will know that as church... Christ will defeat Satan every single time. So is the hearing the voice of, of, of God difficult? No, it's not difficult. It might seem difficult if your conscience isn't clear. It might seem difficult if you don't spend time in his word, if you don't know his word. It will be difficult if, if you want God to compete against games or uh, uh, viewing different videos or streaming or whatever it is, God cannot compete to cell phones with cell phones or tablets or screens. And God will not compete because God is God. And therefore, I think what we want at times is that we want God to come into our lives and stop us. And, and, and this has happened many times. In my life, I think one of the most uh, one of the most precious things in my life that I've seen is at my baptism, um, I gave God permission to disrupt my life when when I am offline, and I love the fact that God has interrupted my life and said, "Pierre, you're offline, son. This is what I have for you. This is where I'm going with you." And every single time before then, God Himself has started speaking to me and said, Pierre, listen, son, Satan is trying to get you off. And therefore, stay the line. Stay close to me. Stay with me. Here I am. And it's always in personal time with him. It is always in him being your first love. And that is what I so valued lately, is God just once again coming into my life and saying, my son, I want to be your first love. And and bringing me back to that passion of Jesus being my first love. And I, I know that so many times when we speak about that, like Jesus being our first love, it, it, it seems so easy. It seems so beautiful. And we don't always try to not make him our first love. It's just that certain things happen. To me in ministry, that happened with responsibility. Taking up responsibility under love. That's how easy it was for Satan to, to take a passionate heart for Jesus, but make me responsible. And in that way, what happened was there was a, a strategy of deceit. There was manipulation and control that, that Satan wanted to bring in. And, and, and because I was trying to guard hurts and frustrations and certain things and, and purely having a passion for Jesus, what happened was Satan was trying to make me responsible for what Jesus is busy with. And that is something that, that I so value today because once again, as we, it is to our benefit that the demonic is still there. 
And I honestly benefited from this fight. I benefited from going through this frustrating season of where I had to come to an end, where my faith had to die. And so I feel born again all over again because of my passion and my love for Jesus Christ and Him being my first love. And uh, I so value it. And so what I want to what I want to teach on this morning is we want to look at a scripture and I'm going to build up to a pinnacle um, teaching at the end. There's going to be a pinnacle scripture right at the end. Okay, so this is going to be us looking at is it difficult to hear his voice? And then all these scriptures are going to show us, uh, no, it's actually not because of the following reasons. But then I want to build it up to say, the one thing that's that's difficult is going to be this one statement that I want to make at the end. Okay, so are you guys ready? We're going to go at this. Okay, so I'm going to start off with 2 Peter 1 verse 3, NIV, New International Version. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. I want to Keep the scripture up, and I want to highlight a few things from the scripture. I'm going to, if you see my cursor here on your screen, His divine power has given. Okay, that's the first thing that I want to highlight. Has given. It was already given. He has given us. And what? He has given us everything we need. So His divine power has given everything we need for a godly life. Okay? Through what? Through our knowledge of Him. Okay, so if you do not lay down the world and grow in your knowledge, this week I had a chat with a person who is sitting in this dilemma that a loved one that is not putting in the effort into Scripture. Weekly, I sit with people where they are not putting in the effort to get to know His Scripture. People are playing computer games, watching movies, browsing internet, browsing applications, doing Pinterest, doing Instagram, doing Snapchat, doing Facebook, doing whatever it is that this world has to offer. Doing so much of that, that they don't have time for the Word of God. Not only to not study it, but not just read it, not just be in His Word. And therefore, their knowledge of God never increases. And and then they make God guilty for some of the hurts in their lives. Some of the wrong choices. God can, in a very powerful way, in an instant, come into our lives and change everything in a second. Because that is how big He is. But because people don't understand and recognize how big God is, they don't trust Him. And because they don't trust Him, they always keep God guilty. And and they wash their hands and go, I'm not guilty because here's the thing. God doesn't reach out to me. God isn't coming into my life. God isn't correcting me. He's not helping me. I don't sense God. I don't feel God. Go, yes, maybe because you are too busy. Maybe because you don't know His Word. Maybe because you're not spending time with Him. I'm a minister of the Word of God. I have given up a professional life. I have given up the opportunity and not the ability, the opportunity to live a life where we made millions. I gave up engineering. I gave up project management to come into this line. I have given up willingly due to the Holy Spirit leading me into this position. And there are times in this passion that His church that I recognize there's the passion again. You can't build His church. Only Jesus can build His church. And every single time, even though I have so much knowledge because of the amount of time I spent in His Word and the rest, 
even then the cunningness of Satan at times wants to creep in. This is my passion. I have given up everything to do what I am doing, to sit in front of this, of this camera this morning. It would have been a congregational meeting, but for me to sit here, it was because of a choice willingly. However, the scripture is true to you and to me. It is not easier for me because I am a minister of the word of God. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. He called us. And so therefore, if we put scripture to this, we will take James where it says, therefore draw near to me and I will draw near to you. It is always God that has called us, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. For he has called us by his own glory and glorious and he is good. If you don't believe it, it's due to a lack of knowledge or understanding. And that would always be because your human nature, the fleshly nature, is being attacked cunningly by the demonic in hindering you from getting to the understanding of what he has given us. He has given us everything. God does not have to do anything more. He has given us everything we need for a godly life. Okay, so that's what I wanted to settle firstly. Okay, this is that God is not guilty. He has given us everything. Okay, so that's the first thing. God is not guilty. He has given us everything we need for a godly life. Who called us? Okay, so I hope that that scripture settled something. We'll put out the study during this week as well. Okay, so you'll receive this by Friday as we look into this week's study. I'm going to continue to the next scripture, and this is Ephesians 3 verse 20, Amplified Version. God is able to do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Okay, so this is the second scripture that I want to focus on. We're hearing his voice. That's what we're looking at. Hearing the voice of God. Is it difficult to hear the voice of God? God is able to do super abundantly, far over and above, all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thought, hopes, or dreams. Ephesians 3 verse 20. It is important that we recognize that God is not man. And see, this is a second thing that I've recognized. What is difficult, difficult to hear God's voice if we don't understand how far above our thinking God is. Usually we think we need to deserve our way back to God. That is religion. Usually we think that we have to work back at all the mistakes we made in our lives. That is religion. That is demonic. That is from Satan. If you don't recognize that God has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him, who called us by His own glory and goodness, you would not recognize that he has had a super abundant, over and above, all that we dare or ask, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes and dreams. God can come into any situation in your life, anything, and change it in a moment. That is how big he is. So if you think that your life is a mess due to the way that you messed up your life, the, all the wrong choices and you coming here. That is Satan constantly still defeating you. You are then still making the wrong choices. If you don't recognize that it is God that is supernatural. God has an ability beyond what you can think. He can touch a person in a moment and a life can be changed. How many times... Have we heard of people trying to stop their addictions, whether it is alcohol, smoking addiction, um, uh, uh, using drugs, 
um, sexual addictions, in, in lusting or, and the rest. How many times, how many testimonies of people trying and trying and trying to rehabilitate themselves through self-effort and denying themselves the, the, the passion or the desire and keeping it away from themselves and chewing gum to stop trying to smoke. Now, for some it has worked, but here's the thing. When you give yourself over to God completely and you understand that through His Holy Spirit, He can take that desire away in a moment. When you pull close to Him and understand that He can do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think. That is just when it comes to things like lusts or lures or things that we fall into the trap of believing that without this I cannot live. I need a smoke. This is one things that we've seen is how much money people were willing to pay for cigarettes because it is not for sale any longer. And, and just because of an addiction, them physically believing that they cannot live without a cigarette. And, 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 and it's so sad to hear when it comes to alcohol, people believing that they cannot live without alcohol. When it comes to drugs, people believing that they cannot live without drugs. They need it. Why they want to cut off the world and the hurts and the pains in their lives and, and this go into a trip because then they don't stress, then they don't fear. But God is the one that can take away anxiety, stress and fear. What is it that we need? We need to face ourselves and be willing to give over, give our lives up and say, Lord, I am sorry. I want to give my life up. What is that? It is a surrendered life. It is us surrendering our lives to Him. And that takes humility. And that's usually where the problem comes in. Because arrogance and pride is usually the reason we don't want to be humble and give up and surrender. So the next 